Welcome to the first episode of Beck's Best, where Beck Lover takes you to all the places that he loves. Today, we start our journey together, my friends, in Fort Lee, New Jersey. Fort Lee is a borough at the eastern border of Bergen County, New Jersey, one of the most affluent and richest counties in all of America. Fort Lee is situated right on the Hudson River, right across from Manhattan, on top of the Palisades. Fort Lee is named for General Charles Lee after George Washington and his troops had camped at Mount Constitution overlooking Burdett's Landing in defense of New York City against the British during the Revolutionary War, making this a very historic town and a very important one to the creation of the U.S. During Washington's retreat in November of 1776, along what today is Main Street in Fort Lee, Thomas Paine composed his pamphlet, The American Crisis, which began with recognized phrase, these are the times that try men's souls. These events are recalled at Monument Park and Fort Lee Historic Park. Another amazing fact about Fort Lee is that before Hollywood, the history of cinema in the U.S. can trace its roots to right here on the East Coast. Fort Lee was the motion picture capital of America before Hollywood became what it is today. People of the tri-state area know it's very expensive to live in Fort Lee and all of Bergen County because of how close it is to New York City. Just across the bridge from New Jersey to New York, it's gonna cost you $16. I say you take that $16 and you spend it on a quality cigar and come and visit your friend Beck Lover at the Cigar Room. Follow me, let's go have some fun. Here I am with the founder of the Cigar Room, Willie Flores, Cuban American. He's gonna tell us a little bit about how the Cigar Room started and his own brand of cigars and a little bit about, you know, the cigar culture. Yeah. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Beck. Well, I could say I've been doing this my whole life. My, my father started this in the U.S. Originally, my dad started, the, well, with my grandfather. My grandfather started in Cuba, but my dad learned everything from him. When we came to the U.S. in 1962, even though I was born here, my dad started working like in a rice factory and embroidery business, even though he was a cigar man, a roller, you know, put blends together and everything. You guys we, left before Castro or after? No, right, two years after. But they were on the list in 59 to get out. And it took almost three years to get out. But um, So came as refugees from communism. Yeah, yeah. From there we went straight to Miami. I finally got the, the okay to leave. And of course they strip you of everything before you leave. You can't leave with anything. No money, no jewelry, my mom's wedding ring, everything, you know? That's, you know how communism is. <laughs> yeah, I don't I have do. to tell you. But, so, when he got here, he came here with three kids. Uh, for a year and a half, two years, he was doing side work with, you know, working, like, carrying 50-pound bags of rice, working in an embroidery factory all night. And then, um, he, want, he, he hooked up with a friend of his that came out here and said, why don't you bring the cigar brand back out, the Flood the Flores, which is our, our name, our family name, and that's the brand we had in Cuba. So, of course, he didn't have much money, so he did the best he could. He opened up a little, uh, little cigar factory in Miami. That was in 1966. My dad would spend two weeks out of the month down there and come back to Jersey, you know, he's got his family. So, you know, I was two years old and all that. So it, it went well in the beginning. In the 60s, 70s, the cigar industry wasn't bad. It was pretty decent. Um, he was sold to a lot of bodegas and uh, inside the factory we sold there. This is in Cayo, Miami. When there weren't that many, actually. There were, most of the cigar factories were in Key West and in Tampa. So he continued it. Thank God it went pretty decent. And then came the 80s and, you know, my dad was getting a little older now and... The cigar industry was really wasn't good at all. A lot of regulations, a lot of taxes, a lot of everybody was against the cigar. It was the against the meat potato guy, you know, the cigar smoker. So then, in the uh, early '90s, me and my brother, my older brother, we decided to open up a cigar store in Hoboken. And I said, let's do this. Let's bring Dad's cigar back in the market, man. I, and Hoboken at the time was booming. Uh, Everybody's moving in because you know, ten, yuppies, yeah, five well, street right, people, all yuppies, five minutes from Manhattan. And I go, Listen, this is a great opportunity, let's do this. 
And he was like, ah, nobody's really smoking cigars. I said, listen, I'm telling you, this is a new, different generation now. And thank God. What do you was, think brought it back? Do you think? Uh, I think that generation and without a doubt, Cigar Fiction Auto Magazine. So the magazine played a very had big a role. big role. That magazine came out in 92. We opened up in 90. And celebrities were smoking. Oh Arnold Schwarzenegger, God. Sylvester Stallone. You think That's, these people definitely oh, helped? Oh, yeah. Ma massive influence on that. That Thanks, was big. Arnie. That was big. That was big. Um, so then in 93, I, uh, I came up here. I was looking in Fort Lee to open up a store with my, my, my dear friend and practically my brother, Jose Perez Pep. And I convinced him a little bit to do it. And we did it. And we found a place in... Uh, we found a place here in Fort Lee on Main Street. That was in 1993. Here we are 27 years later. Thank God things have grown. Um, no, I, I have a passion for this. This is you all. expanded. You added another partner too, right? Yeah, yeah, Carlos. Veteran? Yeah, Carlos. Marine. The three in Iraq. tours in Iraq. In 96, we moved over. I mean, 96. In 2016, we moved over from uh, Main Street to here. Our lease was up. We needed a bigger place. And he wanted to come in. So. He, you know, he came in with us. We opened up here four years ago, and I think it's the best move we ever made. The place is, uh, we're happy with the way it looks. It's comfortable. We got a massive selection, and we're right near the bridge. You know, right near all the Stone highways. Throw. Yeah. People even from New York City, I noticed, come here to get away from the from the craziness yeah, of Manhattan. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your cigar brand. Yeah. Well, La Oja. You have it here. This is La Oja Cigars. This is one of the lines. We have five lines. Um, this is the Maduro. Our cigars are made in Dominican Republic. Years ago, when my dad was around, uh, we were making them in Miami. Now we've moved everything 10 years ago to the DR, um, where the cost is obviously less. Uh, it's just the more hands-on over there with quality control. It's a more organized setup. And uh, the, anything made in the US now, you, you, you're going to pay through your ass tax-wise. It's, it's, you know, there's so many regulations in this industry, in our industry. But uh, yeah, it's a Dominican cigar. We have cigars that are either mild, mild to medium, full body, medium to full. And then we got stuff like this here. This is uh, two special lines. This is my favorite, the uh, purple line, the signature purple label. Uh, they're pretty full body. It's a unique, unique cigar. It's a tobacco that's rarely found in the DR. Not many people grow it. Um, we had a home run with that. And then you got the blue label, which is right here. That's the, uh, the Reserva, only comes in one size. That's a special smoke too. It's five years, that cigar's, the wrapper on that cigar is aged for five years. That's what makes it so unique and limited. But uh, yeah, I mean, our stuff's doing well. We've been doing this. This is all I'm ever gonna do. This is what I do, cigars, you know? I've noticed you've had some really heavy hitters in the cigar industry come through these doors. Carlito Fuente Jr., the Fuente family. Yeah. And yeah. I also have met uh, George Padron. George Padron. I mean, these guys yeah. are, are some of the biggest, yeah. of the biggest in the cigar industry. You know, we're, we're a very small industry, and it's almost family oriented. Like, they don't forget that they started. You started with them. Uh, companies like Carlito Fuente, who's a true gentleman. We you were know. at his birthday, cause yeah, you. that's right. And um, which birthday was that? His that was his uh his grand havana I know, was it 60th 65th 70th? 60th 60th it was a 60th yeah. birthday we were at the yeah. grand havana it's like six years ago yeah I'll put some pictures up at that yeah but uh you know it's a, it's a tight community our industry and guys like george padron with all the things they have as busy as they are and the demand they have for, for them to go to other people's places it's crazy you know to have him here is great it's uh it's a, it shows an appreciation they have for us for the business we've given them all these almost 30 years now and uh, but they're two gentlemen really good people now this is an exclusive cigar room obviously people can come in and purchase cigars they have an area where they can smoke but there's also a members only area yeah we have a members uh area to come in you have your locker uh to keep your cigars we store them perfectly uh they can keep a bottle of booze if they want um they have their own key fob to beat themselves in they can come in and sample cigars hang out it's like a second home for them yeah and it's it's worked out great it's worked out great people love it like you said before we have people that come in from the city and now on october 1st new york is implementing a 75 percent tobacco tax that's gonna crush a lot of stores in manhattan Nat sherman just closed we just heard that Nat sherman yeah. closed i was very sad about and that that was like a landmark i hear two davido stores might be closing too now one the brookfield I mean, that mall house was a landmark yeah on landmark that's, Street. That's, the place was unbelievable that's uh i can't believe it's a casualty yeah. of everything going on there's so many amazing places going out of business mm, it's incredible to me it's like 
Will we ever see the old New York? No. I, I, if we do, I, I think it's going to take at least 10 to 15 years, honestly. From just the six, seven months of damage. And if another guy like the Blasio comes back in, replaces him, it's going to be the same continuation. There's no question about it. But the cigar room will be here, God willing. God willing. So, I, getting back to that, the tax, I, as long as our governor doesn't do what they did, God willing, he won't. We're going to uh, pick up a lot of that business, I think. You know, being so close to the city, the Bronx, you know, this area. Um, besides paying the toll, the, the amount of money there's going to be saving in taxes. And especially if they buy in bulk. You know, we're here. If anybody wants to come, you'll love the store. That's you for sure. You mentioned Beck Lover and you get 10% yes, off. Absolutely. 10% off. 10% off. off. You mentioned Beck Lover. Yes. Yes. Willie, I want to thank you for your time. No, and, uh, my pleasure. We have, I love it. Yeah, I've been a member for a long time. This is a place to come and collect your thoughts, meet great people, and just kind of forget about your everyday problems. One cigar at a time. Absolutely. It's, uh, thanks for having me and uh, reaching out to the people, your fans. You know, he's got a great, great, great show, that's for sure. Thanks, Will. Very informative. So I'm in the humidor with Iris. She handles a lot of the customers that come in here, and she's a grown her knowledge about the cigar life what do you like about the cigar culture i like that it really is it's so varied you know cigars and it's just su it has such a rich history and you know me i'm all about history just the history of the industry and what it means to mm -hmm. do you do you feel i mean are, are the majority of the clients that come in men i mean do you see women coming yeah. in and buying cigars too there are some women who come in, but it is male dominated. For now. For now. But it is growing. It is. It is. And I love seeing women come in. You know, it's always a treat. But women do smoke cigars. And people ask me all the time, they're like, wow, you smoke cigars and you're a woman? I'm like, yeah. And there are women that are members here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there are. They have lockers. I mean, they're very serious about it. Yeah. And, you know, it's not just it's not just a boys club. You know, we have women who they spend the money. They come here. They have their lockers. They... Uh, you know, they're, they're here. bosses. Uh huh. Exactly. So I'm gonna pick out something. I'm gonna pick out something a little easier today. I'm gonna go with an avo. All right. And um, maybe you can show us what you do. All right. You yeah. you, you service the whole thing. You cut the cigar yeah, for them I and like. All right, let's run. White glove service. How do you know what's the right cut? I always like to ask people what they like, but you know, it actually does make a difference how you cut your cigar. Straight cut is the most common, but a V cut, the concave cut gives you more filler and less wrapper. So it's a more concentrated pull. And uh, you know, if it gives you more flavor of the cigar. So that's what I prefer. Uh, and then there's punch, which is just, you don't even cut anything. You just do a little hole right in there. And that gives you the most concentrated pull. I'm gonna go with a V cut. Can you light me up? Oh, Willie, you up. a lot of people, you know, might not be familiar with the etiquette of cigar smoking. Right. I've asked a lot of people if they tried smoking a cigar and sometimes they say, oh, I got sick. Oh, I threw up. I mean, how do you recommend someone to, to, to smoke a cigar the first time or if they're new to the cigar life? Well, if it's sort of like wine in the sense that there are people that hear about cigars and Let's say they they got money, so they, they want to go right to the best. And I tell them, listen, first graduate and to enjoy a cigar is to understand what it took to create the cigar, for one. Number two, what are you, what's going to appeal to you? I would definitely recommend a mild cigar, a very mild cigar if it's your first cigar. Now what's the easiest way for someone to know that they're smoking a mild cigar? Um, is there a color? Well, is there yeah, a name? Sort of like the one you have in your hand. Not always, but... I would say a good 60 to 70 percent when you see the light Connecticut wrapper, it tends to be milder. Now, the blend inside has a lot to do with the body. And the Lijero leaf is the strong leaf of the cigar. If it has only Seco, which is the mild one, then um, you, that's going to be a very mild cigar. Your tobacconist should know this when you go to the store. But normally like a, an Ashton, a, a, a PG, a La Hoja Crema, a Macanudo, so even just about every company has a line that's mild. Avo, you know. And, and usually is natural, is that is that a way to Yeah, it? natural, natural. They call it generally they're a little but more. Natural mild. is really anything that's not Maduro. So that's natural. 
uh, an Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper, which looks a little darker, is considered natural too, natural. But uh, you got to know it's a back in it. He's got to recommend that. Like I said, it's like going to a wine shop and saying, listen, I, I've never had a glass of red wine, but I really want to have something nice. Should I buy that $200 bottle of wine? The guy said, listen, you can, but if you never had, op start opening your palate. Grad let your palate graduate to different levels. Start with a Pinot Noir and then work your way up. And what's the rule for smoking? I mean, if you're brand new, I mean, how often should you be puffing? The proper way, first of all, the proper way is to just snip the cigar. I think. I mean, some people prefer a punch, but in the beginning, just snip it. You don't have to snip a lot off. Um, light it. You want to light it perfectly with stick matches or butane lighter. Uh, spin the cigar around, warm it up first to get a nice even burn. Then you put it in your mouth and you light it while you're spinning it. So you get a perfect round red dime, like, you know, hot. Uh, and then you should smoke it one puff every 30 seconds, every 40 seconds, you know. Just there's, take a puff. Yeah, there's people that smoke it so fast. They get sick. Not only that, you create a lot of heat in the cigar. Now the cigar starts burning, what they call canoeing. It starts burning through the side, a hole, because it's so hot, the cigar, that it's got to burn somewhere else now. And that's, you know, with, with time and experience, they learn not to do that. Members also have access to an exclusive conference room. You can invite your friends over, rent it out by the hour, smoke cigars, get a friendly game of cards, or just hang out and watch the games. You can also use it for corporate meetings. This is why I've selected the Cigar Room as hands down one of the best cigar lounges, not only in the state of New Jersey, but in the tri-state area. I'm here with my friend Marlon. He's also a member here at the Cigar Room, and uh, I met him here, actually. I, I made a lot of friends here. And uh, Marlon, uh, how long have you been smoking cigars, and what do you like about it, man? Probably about five years. Uh, I like the peace and tranquility. You get to get away from things, life, you know, just the unwinding process. It's good, and it's good for your health. How often do you smoke? At least once a day, and then on the weekends, probably three or four times. And uh, do you find it peaceful when I'm here? It's hysterical when you're here. It's not that quiet when I'm here, right? <laughs> <laughs> I got my friend Wayne over here. Wayne clearly showing who he supports for the president. Uh, Beck and the Comeback team have no political affiliation. We are libertarians. But we will allow Wayne to speak about the cigar life. It's the place where we can all express our feelings of our politics without getting slaughtered and beat up. If you want to see some other amazing places, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Follow me on my journey where I bring you the best of the best. Beck's best. I show you the best places to hang out, have a meal, have a drink, and anything and everything you can imagine. Also, check out the playlist section of my channel where I have a weekly talk show where I interview amazing guests, celebrities, and all types of amazing people about their lives and their struggles. This is Beck Lover, and thank you for watching Beck's Best.